everybody. I'm Dr. Gurleen Sikka. I work as consultant in Department of Pediatrics and Neonatology at CK Bidra Hospital. Today I'll be discussing about vaccination, the common queries I have in OPD from the parents. So first of all, what is vaccine? So vaccines are any product which is given to the body to uh, generate an immune response. So how effective are them? If you ask me, they are the most useful and cost effective tool available to mankind to prevent diseases. Do all the vaccines prevent 100% of the diseases? No, not exactly. But yes, if your child is vaccinated with a, uh, for a particular uh, organism and in case, uh, God forbid, the child gets the disease, so the chances of severity would be decreased if the child is vaccinated, which is a big boon. Then thirdly, parents ask that uh, there are so many injections available, why to give so many injections, are there any oral alternatives? So uh, most of the vaccines, yes I agree, are injectable. Some of them like oral polio vaccines and rotavirus are orally available. But then the uh, pro uh, gain we get by giving those injections, I understand it is painful for you to see your child being uh, given two injections at same settings and then the, obviously the child would cry and be uncomfortable after a few hours of the vaccines. But then the overall uh, gain which we get by, by the child gaining the immunity and everything, so it's worthwhile. So yeah, you should go ahead with the vaccines and everything. Then few queries we have related to few uh, vaccines like oral polio vaccine cause uh, impotence or measles vaccine causing autism. So see all the vaccines which are available in the market, they have passed through strict uh, test before coming into the market. There are animal studies and there are human trials and both nationally and internationally whatever vaccines are available they pass through a specific phase of the trial. So uh, these are all myths I would say and not uh, there is no scientific reasons which are available for any of these vaccines being associated with such side effects. The next question which we commonly ask is if the child has uh, missed some vaccines due to particular reason maybe the child was ill or the mother had gone to the parents house. So as soon as possible when you get the chance you should get the vaccines I understand due to the pandemic most of the children because the hospitals were overburdened and children were not getting out of home and parents were not maybe getting the opportunity to get those vaccines but yes whenever the situation improves or whatever the condition was uh, which was hindering the vaccination you should get the next dose as soon as possible the another common question is that if the child has already got that disease so should we vaccinate the child again for that particular vaccine so my answer would be yes because the immunity you get from the infection may, might be different from the immunity you get from the vaccines and there are different kinds of vaccines available some are live vaccines some are inactivated vaccines so uh, the way the body reacts to them is different so yes you should consider uh, uh, discussing it with your doctor that the child has got so and so disease and now uh, how much gap should we keep and does the child require that vaccine don't take that decision yourself then another question asked is why so multiple repeated doses are asked then again like I I said that there are different components of the vaccine so some vaccines are there which only one dose is given and it provides lifelong immunity but for other vaccines because the uh, component of the maybe organism given is different so the body uh, needs repeated exposure to those uh, components so that a definitive titer is made another thing is what to expect during the vaccination visit firstly always carry your immunization card so that the doctor knows which vaccine is due secondly uh, you should uh, ask the doctor whether uh, what to expect after vaccination that he'll explain you what side effects and everything are expected and what to do like in case cold sponging is required or uh, uh, paracetamol for fever or everything so you should discuss those things thirdly you should discuss uh, tell your doctor if the child has had any previous reaction to any vaccine if you should inform him uh, that the child had any previous reaction so when to be uh, careful there are few things which for all vaccines they tell firstly if the child is inconsolably crying for more than three hours secondly if the child has become unresponsive or limp after any vaccination thirdly if you have observed any abnormal movements which we call convulsions in your baby so for that uh, thing most of the doctors after few vaccines expect you to stay for 30 minutes in the hospital premises but even after going for uh, let's say 48 to 72 hours if the child is having any of these abnormalities which I have discussed so you should rush to the nearest hospital as expected almost all the vaccine visits are normal baby visits also so you should voice your concerns if you have anything regarding the 
feeding or uh, gro growth pattern of your child you should discuss those then uh, on every visit most of the doctors tell you when to come next so you should always ask when is the next uh, visit expected for the vaccine so i have this i've tried to discuss most of the queries i've got uh, from the patients uh, if you have any other further queries you can add in the comment section and we'll try to cover it or any other topic if you think it's worthwhile discussing we can discuss that and uh, for your information i am available from monday to saturday op in opd almost every day and you can book a slot by calling at the reception or by uh, going online thank you